welcome to this quick overview of Fusion FX. Here is the shortcut on my desktop. I only need to double click it and the default password is admin. So admin and admin will allow you into the software. It opens up and it shows our clients as we find them at this moment in time. And there's an intuitive search box in here. So we could perhaps search either on a postcode. There it's found my postcode. Or I could simply come in here and start the first part of a surname. And there are the parts of the surname or Christian name. We can also search on the person that was allocated or set or commence this design. So all of that can be done very, very easily. We can search on ascending, descending with surnames, then four names, etc. So here I'm going to open up my client and this is the one that I've currently working with. Here's my client and here are the designs that have been allocated or created for this one particular customer. But I want to give you a quick overview. Here on the left hand side is the orange management way in and out if you like. This is where you manage your designs, your customers. You can see it's defaulting to customer. We can set them with task. We can look at the history related to all of the designs. We can search on a recent design or there is this button in here called manage and manage has an effect overall around the whole piece of software. So we can look at what it knows around customers. For instance, what phone types can be checked in and out. Compulsory fields are set for fields that you want to make compulsory. For instance, the postcode. System here, daily details. This is where you would put your name and the address of the business and have it highlighted on all of the pieces of paper that you produce. Another area in here that might be of an interest is Manage Catalogues. Manage Catalogues is all the catalogues that you've got within your software. We can check for updates. It will go onto the server, check your dongle number, and then give you a list of all the updates that are available to you. As you can see, some are marked updates and some are not installed. So I can deselect and just choose to check each and every one to suit me and my moment. Then when I press OK, it will download that software and actually install it for you. So there's no hardship at all. The other interesting in the area in here is options. Now in options, this is an alphabetical list of what you can change to make this become your own personal default. So, for instance, annotation. Notice it's an alphabetical list. In annotations, it's suggesting to me that I will have in my plan view a unit name always listed. I don't have to. I could have none or I could have a number. I could choose then to have all the fonts chosen, font sizing, and whether they're bold or not, and a default arrow automatic dimensions. I've selected on my personal machine that only fixtures are going to be highlighted and as added auto features is another one. I've deselected auto cornice, pelmet and ceiling filler but I will always have checked in auto plinth, side panels and worktops when I choose auto features. But you'll notice I've also deselected edit worktops because I only want to edit the worktops when it suits me. General, well here you can see now on the general tab that the accent colour is orange. Now, an accent colour is what's lying behind each one of these tabs or the tool when you choose it, it will be orange. And I've chosen to contrast the orange with black accent text color. You'll see that coming in a short while. Other information in here, well, the info block. The info block is placed at the bottom of each plan, elevation, perspective, or multiple view, and it will be turned on or off I can have it set in any one font and font size and even down here I could go and locate my company's logo and have that produced as well. 
So a whole range of things in here that you can choose to make your own default software. So you can see here it's informing me that some of those changes will take effect after I reset the software. Well, immediately having checked that, you'll notice now that files been moved over to home. And on the home tab, some people would call this the miscellaneous tab, where everything else belongs that doesn't belong in one of these other tabs. You'll notice at the moment everything's greyed out because I've simply not got an active drawing. And secondly, when I select uh, tabs called insert, this is where I can place into the design any one particular item or many items. So here, catalog items is highlighted in orange. Inserting, dragging, dropping or using the cursor to place your products. Annotate. Now annotate is where we can choose to ignore or to add dimensions and also annotations. And you'll see these a little bit more in a few minutes. And the viewing tab, finally. Finally, here it is. I can see plans, elevations, perspectives. I can change the sunlight. I can go and manage my lighting. I can walk around the design. And most importantly, I have this thing here, it's the navigate or change the viewpoint button. It's also active down here and stacked with my catalogue items. So there it is, ready working. However, there is a sixth tab and you'll notice it's not available at the moment. It will be when I choose one particular object to edit and that's a key to its name is the edit tab. So let's go back to file. Here's my current client and drawing that I've worked with so far. And I'm simply going to choose now to edit it. And the drawing will now come up and work with me. So here's my floor plan so far. First of all, notice the dimensions are added as I suggested they would be together with cabinet names. Well, it's moved immediately to the home tab and here home tab is miscellaneous and the home tab for instance is where we would meet clashing clashing is where two things are pushed into each other and it's trying to raise your awareness here manage material where we could import material views or materials for making shapes or coloring things default style where i can change the style of the walls or the cabinets or any one of those combinations also in here pricing center where i could offer discounts you notice always that there is a little hint of what each tab represents and it is glowing orange because that is the default color. Insert, so all the tabs now are available to me. Notice most importantly that the cursor control is in the insert tab. Cursor is there and I can simply push the wheel of the mouse into the mouse itself and the cursor will join me wherever I place it, including on a wall. But further, I can move that cursor anywhere I want it to be and it will move around as I would want it to be, simply coming in here now and choosing to move it to the right hand side, perhaps just 200 millimeters and it does exactly as it's told but we've got planning direction as well we can go clock or anti-clock so it can now go anti-clockwise and in that direction but there are shortcuts if i were to hold Control alt and then press the opposite square bracket or parentheses, it will go through 180 degrees. Well, we've got these controls here as well. Control 9 will give you, and there's a hint, Control 9 will give me an opportunity to rotate it through 90, not 180 degrees. I can then go and place any one particular object from there.
We've got catalog items and that is this area here. The last thing we chose to do was to place in a wall. I could then come up to catalogs and here it's choosing the catalog that I've actually chosen to build the kitchen from in principle and there are a range. We've also got the filters in here. I can go and choose base units other and then sub filters and I could come down and choose perhaps another oven housing. It's all there, it's drag and drop or simply just double click or press this button. Very easy to work with. Remember I talked about auto features and the fact that I deselected pelmet cornice and ceiling fillers but if I leave the check here for worktop and plinth it will then go and put them on. It won't allow me to edit them until I press edit worktop so at this moment I have already edited this worktop, I've clipped the corner off and that can be done even after you've placed the worktops simply by clicking edit worktops. So it will leave alone the plinth already placed and allow you simply only to communicate with the worktop. So here very very simple to work with, insert dragging, dropping, placing, manipulating, annotate. Annotate is where we can go and choose on a one-off basis to now go and choose dim dimension, perhaps base units, or and wall units. Or we can hide them all because we want a bigger floor plan or we don't want to give away information. Having printed a copy off to the kitchen fitter, we can then choose to be more selective on what we then print out the second time. So you've got your total control here under the dimension area. Rail configurations, well, rail configurations are the way it's hugging the outside of the floor plan. You can have these set at any distance. It's defaulted normally 200 millimeters. I've got mine set at 150. Rail and line values are set normally so that it's not highlighted and these vertical dimensions are horizontal. Simply by clicking on that they become in line with the other measurements. Again, over on the right hand side, annotations. Annotations are where we said by default I'd like to have the order code. Well, I can actually come in here and choose none, or to have the unit name, or to come in here and choose numerically by type and position. So each one of those have been replaced with a number so that when we look for a legend on the printed floor plan it would print it out if selected. So annotation, but more than that what I can actually do is to move my cursor, that was a push of the wheel, into the body of the mouse and then I could come in and choose to bring out a saved annotation and there is my saved annotation. I can click on it and choose then to point an arrow to that area wherever I want it to be. What else have we got? Well we've got the viewing tab and the viewing tab is where we can go from plan view to elevation or to perspective. We can move around these very easily or there is a shortcut with a right click and we can choose to elevate with a control 4 or perspective we can go to the items list or report. So if I went to elevation either by clicking here with a left hand mouse button or choosing control 4 there's my elevation. Again you'll notice that each and every one of these has got a cabinet name on it and there are some basic dimensions. Well if I want to choose to manipulate that I can come in and say annotate by none and the names disappear. I could also hide all the dimensions and the way they've gone. You are in total control with Fusion FX. So going back to the viewing tab, perspective. Well here's its perspective and I've told it to give me a default value of wireframe. That is controlled here in settings. I could choose to go to preview and this is where it will render the drawing in perspective with 
a new and illuminating drawing with sunlight and shadows coming in. You'll notice the under cabinet lights lit and they can be managed as a group or as an individual very simply. But more than that, I could then perhaps choose to turn off the render and that's by clicking the planning mode button. It will go back to a color fill. I can then choose either this button, navigate view, or this button down in here. And then I can choose then to manipulate myself around the room. Once I've chosen a view I like, if I then relieve the planning mode and enable planning, uh, it will go back to the default that I chose a couple of moments ago, working really quite well. We have controls here on the left about the heights and the angles that we're viewing at. It's all controllable in the viewing tab. But more than that, we have little drop downs in and around the software. So we can use these little drop downs, for instance, options, and I can print the information block. The information block is the name and the address of the business together with our customer details and that can be turned on or off, but only seen when you go to print. So what else can we do? Well, let's go back to the floor plan. I've talked enough about these five tabs and I did promise you a hidden one, a sixth one. It will only be active when one thing is selected. If I choose that wall there, you can now see the items or the editing tool becoming active. If I were to select, that's a right click over the tool object, it offers to communicate only with that tool object. And here you can see it's been set by me to have a price, including excluding VAT, with or without a surcharge, its length, its depth and its height, together with the height off the floor. Well, I could come in here and change the depth to 300 millimeters. A bit silly for a fridge freezer, I know, but you can see the door has been left behind. So simply pressing undo will move that back to where it was. We've got the opportunity using these green navigating movement keys. Remember, when I went to insert, they were red because they were talking only to the cursor. Here, I'm going to the Items tab and there I can move an object and it's offering me one millimeter while well, I could move that perhaps 55 millimeters and press enter and there is my fridge freezer moving. If I were to offer to push it back to the right, it gives me that opportunity. It's one mil shy. Well, there it is. There's that one mil shy back where it was a moment ago. But more than that, what I want you to understand is that we only get the editing tool when one item is selected. There it is. Okay, at the moment it's talking to my floor. If I deselect the floor, there the item edit tab has disappeared. What happens if I were to lasso a group of items? There they are. It becomes active, but I can't edit any one of them I can only move them one way or the other. So it is completely intuitive, this software. And I hope that you'll really get to grips with this quick overview. Well, right down here on the bottom left hand corner is an area. And it's actually telling me what my running total is, at, is as of this moment in time. How much I've spent of the client's money. Well, what I could do is if I went on to the catalog item and chose to select this, as I move it over, keep your eyes on the very bottom left hand corner, it's going to give me a hint of what I can do next. So as I bring it onto the palette, can you see it saying hold down the shift to enable or disable snapping? And snapping is it snaps to the wall and to its next neighbour. But if I were to bring this oven housing, and I know it's a silly place to put it, but it demonstrates nicely. Um, as I let it go, up pops 
first of all it's asking me about an oven I'm going to ignore that and down here on the right hand side it's telling me that these items will clash I can acknowledge that and then I can choose to put an oven in the oven housing and there it is it's again illuminated it can be manipulated changed I can make it go up or down I could move it in or out or around or I simply press a delete key and remove it completely you notice the item tab has disappeared because nothing is individually highlighted well more in Fusion FX we've used a, a number of items here this little symbol at the very very top if we were to click on that and choose about Fusion it will give you your current version that you're working on so if support were to ask you you know where to go for it but more than that up on the top right hand corner we've got a new and interesting idea a fusion community and that actually dials up on the internet looks for the community and a community here is where we can go and use a free service you make a registration with your user name and password very easy to do it doesn't cost you anything and it will then lead you through where we have new and up-to-date information but more than that we actually have in here a community where people can talk freely amongst themselves and what they're doing what they've had great successes with and again fusion in the UK can be offering you training dates in here it will give you all the training dates that are currently coming up and available with the cost of them so that if I minimize that for you now that is that little orange person and just to the right of that is a blue fusion help well like any Windows based software we can press F1 as well and what that will do is to bring up a very clever and intuitive piece of software in this little search facility if you were to type perhaps auto features every time auto features are listed within the software it will then bring them up and then you can have a blow by blow introduction one step at a time of what you can do add in decorative items automatically so within the software there is a very easy help desk and here we've got the usual minimize the whole program maximize it or mm, not the best way to close the software down but we could do using that tool it's much much better to go to file and save and once it's saved we can go back to file and then close down that design and then leave the software with an exit so I hope you've enjoyed that brief overview. Do look out for many more masterclasses available.